Hello, this is MJ. It's time for another Mobile Fighter G Gundam review. This time I'm going to be talking about uh, Mobile Fighter G Gundam episode 35, which I don't have the title of written down, but basically it's the one where uh, <laughs> Chibity Crockett goes full America on uh, Domunkashu, on, on Neo Japan's fighter. Um, but seriously, this is the uh, first of, I, I feel like it's actually more than four episodes. Uh, there's four matches that Domun's going to be in against his fellow members of the Shuffle Alliance, uh, but I feel like things go even farther, um, and like there, maybe there's one or two more episodes where Domun's trying to convince the Shuffle Alliance members to fight alongside him against the Dark Gundam, but he kind of uh, struggles to do that. But anyway, that's for the future. I'm going to go ahead and get into the, uh, well, yeah, I'll get into the re review of this episode right now. And I, I think I'm calling this episode, You Sure Know How to Make Me Happy, Chebity Crockett! Because uh, that's what Domun yells um, while they're fighting. And uh, gosh, whew, what, what to say? What to say about this episode? Um, I Man, I don't know. It's funny because it's almost a nothing episode. You, you kind of know at the beginning that Domun is going to beat Chibity because that's how it has to be. Uh, Schwartz Bruder pops up in possibly his funniest entrance where he was pretending to be a statue. Um, but anyway, uh, I, I brought up the fact that the other members of the Shuffle Alliance don't really want to fight with Domun against the Dark Gundam, and they don't really want to prevent the Gundam fight from being interfered with, which doesn't make any sense because each one of them stops uh, being Domun's ally, sort of, because they each want to win the, uh, the Gundam fight. And in order to do that, they have to keep the Gundam fight going, which Master Asia looks like he's busy doing that. But uh, I don't know. It's just kind of strange. So there are some weird pacing issues. There's some weird, like, logic gaps. But this is Mobile Fighter G Gundam, and, you know, logic is never its strong suit. So just kind of have to ignore them. I mean, they kind of took me out of it because I, I thought, like, well, that just doesn't make sense. Why would you be... Uh, why would you be doing this, guys? You know, I can understand the characters not wanting to fight alongside Domun, definitely not wanting to lose to him, but the whole thing where they kind of walk away from him and say, like, bro, we're not going to help you, you know, keep the fight going, uh, was, was dumb. So, uh, that's too bad. But, uh, what matters more than that is, uh, the passion and the fire that was brought up throughout this episode and on display, um, because... Domun and uh, Chibity have never had a decisive battle against each other, and uh, Chibity is confident that he's gonna do it this time because he, you know, unbeknownst to us, but beknownst to him, discovered a new ability in the Gana Highlands, this machine gun punch, where I guess he shoots out, I thought it was only five, but it looks like he shoots out like ten, you know, balls of fire or whatever, because uh, he's discovered his own super mode, which is pretty awesome. Um... <laughs> You know, it's the whole iron sharpening iron type thing. But anyway, uh, the the probably the funniest thing for me about this episode was that, uh, like, you know, it's a show. It's a kid's show. Uh, it's going to fall in line with the tropes. It's shown in action. You know certain things are going to happen. You know Domun's going to win. But I think the biggest problem for me is how Domun beat um, Chibity. And uh, I, I'll say one other positive thing before I really rip into it. Uh, I enjoyed the fact that in order to train, uh, Domun just had uh, Alan B and her Gundam throw rocks at him, and uh, that was pretty great. So uh, it, it reminds me a lot of uh, stuff that you'll see in some old tokusatsu, probably old kung fu movies too, but for sure I know uh, it happens in Kamen Rider V3, it happens in Kamen Rider Black, he kind of trains himself. Uh, that way by like rolling, I can't remember, but he ends up saving a puppy and discovering a new uh, super powerful move for himself. Uh, and then in the you know, the original Kamen Rider, in like, I don't know, episode 10, somewhere between 10 and 15, uh, the writer has uh, his buddy help him, uh, you know, do make a power up by possibly rolling rocks at him. So this like, this hit all my, uh, hit all my buttons and it made me very happy to see Domun training like that. But, uh, Anyway, the conceit of the um, the escalation and of these people fighting against each other to get better and better, uh, and ultimately that leading them to having the ability to defeat the Dark Gundam at the end of the series and all that other stuff is really cool. You know, it, it's simple, it's classic, it makes sense, it's inevitable, 
um, that the characters would need to get stronger. And what better way to do that than having them face each other because they're all, you know, powerful people. Uh, and I like the rivalry aspect of it because Chibity talks about how Domun has lit this fire in him. And Domun says that Chibity's lit a fire in him. And, uh, you know, that he's just so happy and whatever. Um, but the thing, the, the, the negative thing is that the way Domun beats Chibity is so stupid. Like, it's borderline moronic and uh, I don't think they ever do it again, which kind of affirms to me that maybe it was a... Uh, they pulled it out of thin air and they decided, let's, let's never do that again. And it was this. Uh, Chibity launches his attack and Domun multiplies himself, you know, not even being a, nin a ninja or anything. He multiplies himself and creates nine copies of... It's, a, it's like Burning Shadow or something like that. He creates nine copies of himself and his Gundam, which catch the ten... Uh, projectiles of Chibity, even though they're, you would think they're just illusions, but they're somehow physical copies. And then they all merge together, and then, uh, I don't know if they neutralize the attack, but then they have a cool thing where they, you know, hit each other at the same time, and Chibity's the one who falls and Domun isn't. But, uh, I don't know, it was pretty upsetting when <laughs> the guy just duplicated himself. And, uh, I mean, it's not gonna make me quit or anything, I just accept it as a thing that happens in the show. But it does suck that there was, like, you know, Chibity came up with this great technique, sort of, you know, whatever. It's it's all fake, so it's fine. Uh, but then Domun just comes up with this even, you know, faker technique that isn't as cool. Um, and uh, that's the end of it. And then, like I said, I don't think he ever uses it again, so that's kind of upsetting. But what are you going to do, right? Uh, anyway, that's really all I have to say in reviewing this episode of G Gundam. Uh, but I do want to leave you with all the other quotes that I was going to use as titles. And you tell me what you thought was better people keep telling me uh alternate titles like last week or a couple weeks ago was a rat it can be what is it very mysterious or very uh uh secretive or sneaky or something like that anyway like you know one of another one of domun's uh, terrible lines uh that's great and terrible anyway uh but the alternate lines before i sign off are this uh hey why are you so quiet and work with me on this so i can beat him and I am hope. I am a dream. And then, uh, do it right this time, Alan B. Again, I need more. And we've got, let's see, amazing. His skills keep getting better. I think that's Domun. And then, of course, the one I open with is, you should know how to make me happy, Chibity Crockett, uh, where he yells, Chibity Crockett. And then, uh, oh, after he's beaten, they have this kind of cool moment where they're talking about how as long as the two of us are alive, we can keep fighting each other again and again and getting better and better and stronger and stronger, learning new techniques, whatever. Which I would love like a post uh, series thing where like Chibity finally gets to beat him because that's a serious deal for him. And, uh, you know, maybe years in the future, Gundam, next Gundam fight tournament, number 14, uh, where they all compete again. And I'd love for a series, I've talked about this before, about Sai Saishi, because uh, I think it'd be cool to see him really, you know, come up and, and do something, because he, he gets to be amazing throughout the series. Anyway, and the last thing I talked about, um, you know, when they're consoling each other and, you know, real, you know, they're affirming their friendship and whatever and their rivalry and how it'll continue as long as they you know, defeat the Dark Gundam and allow themselves to continue a life where they can enjoy the sport of fighting and whatnot is this, uh, and I'll close out on it, which is, uh, I guess dreams are dreams because they're endless. And uh, I think that's pretty special, man. Um, that's from Chibity. I love how brash he is, like what a horn dog he is, uh, you know, with his ladies and, you know, hitting on rain and stuff. But ultimately, the guy uh, has this real youthful spirit. I, I love, I just, I really love, as an American, the portray, oh, portrayal, that's the word, of Chibity Crockett and the American spirit and the American dream and stuff. And it's just, uh, I really dig it, man. It's so cool. And then, like, the American people, they're still cheering Chibity on, even though he lost. Because, uh, you know, you can value an underdog, and you saw how hard the guy fought, and you have the same struggles. Um... Man, I think the people of New America love Chibity like the way I love Spider-Man and stuff. Uh, anyway, that's all I have to say. I'm going to get out of here. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to get out of here. Uh, so I'm going to try to get these uh, G Gundam episodes out more regularly. I think I've got like 14 episodes left. So hopefully I can do, I don't know, maybe two a week for the next seven weeks. And then I'll be done way before the end of the year. And uh, we'll see where things go from here. Uh, but you can stay tuned to the Recipher channel, which I may uh, rename 
and rebrand to, well, I'm going to rebrand it to being solely about tokusatsu, so I'll, I'll leave Jigenum up here, but other stuff will um, go here in the future, and you can check all that out. You know where, you know where to go, mjmunoz.com, all that good stuff. Um, you can find all my content there. Anyway, thanks for your time, uh, and uh, give me some feedback. Uh, should I pick a uh, different title, a better title? And uh, I don't know, if you're an American, because I'm not sure where everybody who, uh, the few people who comments uh, come from, uh, do you like the portrayal of Chibity? You think I'm uh, silly for enjoying it so much? Uh, I, I'd love to know what you have to say about that. MJMunoz.com is home for all my work. Podcasts and reviews of anime, tokusatsu, Star Wars, and more. Plus my original writings. If you didn't enjoy this, critique me. If you did, leave me a comment. If you really like this, consider tipping me at coffee.com slash mjmunoz. Thank you so much for your time and attention. Until next time, be well.